Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to take a little bit of a quick look at setting up a tripod correctly so we can pop outside and shoot a few levels and book them up. Just going to release the thumb screw on each of the tripod legs with a locking screw at the base. And then I'm going to release the quick release levers, back them off. You can see the legs extend out the bottom. Just going to re engage those quick release levers. The first thing I'm going to do is extend the leg furthest away from me, out that way. There's a good reason for that. The other two will go beside me. What that does, by moving the first leg out in that direction, the direction that I'm going to set the instrument up, it means I'm not going to trip over or foul the other two legs that have come back either side of me. So a really good trick there. What I'm trying to do at this point is trying to get that dome head as level as possible. I'm going to view it from where I'm standing, looking at it in a horizontal plane that way, and then I'm just going to move to the side 90 degrees, and I'm going to see that front leg needs to go down a bit further to get it level in the other horizontal plane. The moment I've got it to that point, I can just put some light pressure on each of the foot pegs, and that just stops the instrument spreading out, the legs of the tripod spreading out on the instrument. So I've pretty much got that dome head level. I'm happy with that. Notice it's about chin height. Always a good idea to set that at chin height because the distance between the bottom of the automatic level and the eye side of the instrument is about the same distance from the centre of your eye to the bottom of the chin, your chin. So it's a really good tip just to make sure you're not crouching down to take a look or you're not up on tippy toes trying to get a side out. You want to be as comfortable as you can and you want your eye and your lens parallel with the line of sight through the instrument. Next thing I'm going to do is pick up the automatic level. You can see down here on the adjustment stage of the instrument there's three adjusting screws and they spin on a 360 degree rotating base that has an index ring on it. Before I put the instrument up and try and attach it to the head of the tripod, I want to try and get that base off those adjusting screws as parallel as possible. And the reason for that if I can get this arrangement here as parallel as possible before I get it onto the top of my tripod, it's going to make my life so much easier levelling up this instrument once it's on top. And the trick to note with the thumb screws is they sit on a vertical stem. And there's a little mark. I'll try and show you the mark on that stem. You should be able to see it just in there where my finger's pointing. There's a slight, it's really hard to get on the camera, but there's a slight vertical groove. And I'm going to adjust each of the top of the thumb screws to the top of that vertical groove. And when I get it there, I'm going to do the same for the other two. That one's just about there. Yeah, looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to spin it round. I won't give you sore eyes by being too close. I'll just step back so you know what I'm doing with the other two as well now. I'm just adjusting each of them, as I said, to get them to the top of that mark. Beautiful. The third and final one there. Again, the mark's just in there. Coming up, coming up, just a skosh more. Check them again. Yeah, that's pretty good, that one. That's pretty good. Okay, so that took a little bit of time, but that's about the most time you're going to take to get that sorted out. 
That's right. And you can see then when you spin it, it's looking pretty parallel. And that's right, that's what you want. You want that base to be parallel with the index ring when you spin it. The other thing you'll notice here is that there's a little bullseye level just in the top of the instrument so that when it's up on the tripod, there it is there, you can actually use it to get the instrument, the automatic level, horizontal, the line of sight horizontal for 360 degrees. Being mounted there in the casing, it's very hard to see, but it needs to be on that level plane. So they give you a little reverse observation mirror. Just there. And you might be able to see, you can look into that reverse observation mirror and it just shoots down and shows you the bullseye level and how accurate you are. So that you can eliminate errors when you're out shooting those levels. So I've got those three thumb screws beautifully set now. And you can see when I spin the base, the base is nice and parallel through 360 degrees with the index ring. I'm going to line up the line of sight of the instrument with one of the thumb screws and I'm going to pop it on my instrument, oh uh, my tripod, I beg your pardon. I'm going to attach it with a capture bolt. Probably quite hard to see from over there, but if I do a close up, I'll just have to move back. Probably quite difficult to see, but that capture bolt attaches to the base in underneath the automatic instrument. So I'm going to screw that in there, just place the instrument carefully on the dome head, not with the thumb, nice and gently. I'm going to line it up. The line of the instrument with the front thumb screw with the front leg. Really good tip. And that's why the front leg was originally away from me, now the two beside me. You can see now we're all in the same line of axis for my first reading. And that capture bubble, I'm not going to do it completely tight, maybe just a nip away from locking the instrument on to the head. Because what I want to do is float the instrument around that head, watching in the reverse mirror with our old iolator, precision instrument iolator, to make sure as I float it, I can actually get the bubble in the level through the mirror into the ring so I know it's perfectly level. So I don't have to use the thumb screws too much. Really good tip. So I'm just going to put my hands gently on the head using these two little pincer digits on both hands to do, just to grab the base and just to float it around and just moving it and watching the bubble move in the reverse mirror until it pops nicely into the ring. And the moment I get it within that bullseye ring, which is right about there, I'm going to reach under and lock that locking bolt off. And then I'm going to look back at the mirror and I can tell you, and you'll be able to come up when we're in the training room and see it, that bubble is dead centre. I don't even have to touch the thumb screws to adjust them. That's the trick behind the whole thing. Now you won't be able to do that every time. There's always going to be a little bit of adjustment required. Ah, okay, yeah, that's normal. A skosh here, a skosh there. How do we adjust the skosh to get that bubble right? I'm going to dive in on the thumb screws and I'm going to turn them madly to try and get it there. No. There's only two thumb screws I'm going to adjust. The front one that aligns up here with the line of sight of the instrument and the leg. By turning it one way or the other, by the smallest amount, I'll be able to watch the bubble go up and down in a vertical line, vertical plane, vertical axis. 
So if I need to move the bubble just a little bit down or just a little bit up, I'd reach around, I'd look in the mirror, and I do the slightest of turns and I can see the bubble and I've hardly, I've just given it the slot one millimetre movement and it's just brought the bubble down a little bit and that's it. I don't have to touch that front one again. I can also see that it wants to go a little bit to my left. The bubble wants to go that way in the ring. So the second screw, thumb screw that I move is this one here on my left hand side. And it doesn't matter if it had to go to the right, I'd still go to this one here because the bubble on this one will always move in the direction I pull my thumb or push my thumb in front of me. So if I wanted the bubble to go to the left, all I have to do is put my thumb on that thumb screw and move it slightly to the left and the bubble will go that way. There it is. Bang, straight there. Now as it went, it went up a little bit on the vertical axis. So I come back to the front one and I just adjust that again and bring it back down. And that's it. That bubble is now spot on, perfectly set within the ring. And I've hardly touched the screws, thumb screws for adjustment. It's where a lot of people when they first start using it come unstuck. They pull and push on these thumb screws and the whole instrument gets out of alignment with the adjustable base. When they start taking readings, because they've got it so far out of parallel, it can introduce error. All sorts of things happen. Those few simple steps about pre-adjusting the thumb screws evenly before you get it on the dome head. When you get it on the dome head, use the capture bolt to get it tight. And just back it off a little bit so you can float it with your hands to get the rough adjustment on the bubble into the ring and then lock the capture bolt off and you only ever have to use two thumb screws one at a time. The front one, the furthest away from you, in line with the instrument and the leg will make the bubble go up and down as you turn it the smallest amount. And the one on your left, if you needed the bubble then to go to the left, as we said before, thumb on, Pull that thumb screw to the left and you can see the bubble move to where you want it. If it needed to go to the right, thumb on, push it slightly to the right, the thumb screw would go to the right. You're ready. Happy days. We're off leveling. The eyepiece, right here, the eye reticule, where your eye goes, pardon me, where your eye goes to adjust. The crosshairs, it's just a focus like a telescope. So you bring your eye in and you adjust it until you see the two crosshairs beautifully sharp. And then the instrument is set to your eye. The object lens is down here, so you can focus the object lens in on the staff to take a reading. That is the object focus screw. So if you need to adjust for the distance to see where that staff was, this is your object focus screw on the side. Too easy. Just slow, gentle turns of that object screw will bring the staff into view and then you can record the reading in the distance. That's great. You also have a very fine horizontal adjusting screw here. If I reach up and move the instrument with my hands, because my field of vision and my focus point is 40 to 50 metres away. Moving it with my hands here is only five millimetres, but of course, five millimetres here, expand that across the side of view 40 metres away, and I could be moving two and a half to three metres left and right of the staff. And you know, where's the staff? I can't see it. Ah, this instrument? No, it's not the instrument. It's because of fine adjustment here is magnified in error or movement in the distance you are reading from 40 metres away. So there's a fine horizontal adjustment through just here. By turning that one, it just gently, ever so finely moves left and right in the horizontal plane so you can see the staff and not lose it. That's fantastic. 
When you've first done that quick setup and you've attached the instrument and you've got the bubble in place, it's always a good idea just to turn the instrument 180 degrees. This is before you take any readings. And then walk around the other side and just have a look that the bubble still remains inside the rim. And it does, it's perfect. And then you can turn it back and complete the 360 degree turn. And the bubble should still be in the ring, and it is perfect. The instrument on its horizontal base hasn't moved. We're great to take some readings out and book them on our booking sheet to work out the height from our benchmark to our profiles. When we need to move it, move the instrument, move the tripod and take another reading. Because we've hardly adjusted the thumb screws at all, I can reach under, release the capture bolt, take the instrument off, always supporting it underneath, never grabbing it and rolling it around because it's got a compensator and a set of mirrors up there that automatically adjust. So I've always got my hand underneath it so I can't drop it. I put it back in the case. I load the, lock the case and take it off to the next station. I take the tripod with me. When I get to the next station, that's the location that I'm going to reset the tripod. We call them stations. I would reset it exactly the same way. I would bring my instrument up again, bring the capture bowl up, put the capture bowl in so I could float the head again, just grab the glasses and the feeders so I can see what's going on, use my fingers again just to see how I'm floating that head, I'm just going to exaggerate it so you can see. Without that capture bolt lock I can float the instrument around the top of the dome head and line that bubble up. I'm looking at the bubble there as I do it in the reverse mirror. As I do that, when I get it close, when I reach under, I lock the capture bowl off. The bubble's got to go a little bit to the left. It's the left hand screw only. Pull the thumb to the left and the bubble will go to the left. There it goes, beautiful. The bubble wants to go up a little bit, reach around to the front. Turn the front one ever so slightly, beautiful. Done, we're ready to shoot levels again. Turn it 180 degrees. Walk around and have a look and make sure on a 180 degree turn the bubble is still inside the ring, and it is. Complete the 360 degree turn. Checking the mirror again for the bubble, perfect. Off we go. So simple. Hope that helps. When we go outside, we'll, uh, we'll take you through this setup again and you can practice in pairs, both of you instructing the other and walking each other through the process and reminding each other what you did. Really simple process. Once you've been through three or four weeks of our exercises outside, shooting levels and taking contours, you're going to be all over this like a cheap suit, I'm sure. Alright, thanks very much.